Anywho, uh, let's actually get on to what this video will be about, which is fretting. Um, you know, fretting is actually a somewhat advanced concept, but I I use it so much that I believe that it should be used in fucking like everything. Okay, don't use timers if you're a VB.net person or Skid or whatever. I don't know what the fuck they have. They probably have their own timer version in Java, but whatever it is, don't use it. Use fucking frets. Okay, it's a lot more flexible, and it's really the way to go. I don't, I don't know how else to fucking convince you guys to use threads, but uh, yeah. Also, don't set up your threads like they do in the Java examples because it's fucking retarded. It's so fucking contorted that your mind will fucking melt and fuck. It's really actually simple. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the same class. And I'm just going to do this in theory again without compiling it because I'm not an awesome and I don't need to compile it. Um, private, thread, or public, whatever you want to touch. My thread. Something like this. Okay, and then I'm going to make another function here just to organize everything. Static, void. Um, suck. With two Ks. I don't know. Blah. I'll do. And again, I'm going to put in the parameters as main activity activity because I will, at the end of this, want to call some stuff from the main activity. Anywho, we go my thread was new thread, and then we got a bracket thing. Whoops! Right, forgot to call it static. Let's go back here and see if it will rebuild everything again for me. Nope. Okay. And then at uh, override. One second. I'm falling asleep. Okay, sorry about that. Gosh, totally fall asleep. Okay, anywho, I put the colon there just to close it off and get rid of that little squiggly thing. And then we're just going to do public void. Apparently there's no need to do uh, at overrides or any of that shit with the thread, so just void run. Like so. And this is our worker shit. This is where we do all our stuff. Um, in C-sharp, you'd normally just call a uh, a function and then send some parameters to it. But uh, I don't know, maybe you can do string param. Nope. Oops, string. No, I don't think there's a real need for it in how they set it up in Java, so... It's uh, sort of like in JavaScript where you have anonymous functions and shit, so... I'm pretty sure that's how it is. I don't fucking know, so... Fuck it. You don't need parameters anyways, so there's always a way around get, uh, using parameters, and personally, I never use parameters with threads, like, pretty much almost never. So, anywho, moving on... Um, I'm going to create another here little thing here. Um, this is not the way that Java or Android does their things or recommends it, but this is the way I do it, and it makes more sense to do this. So I'm going to say bool then uh, threads running. Okay. And I'm going to define threads running as true when I do the blah. Um, then I'm going to go here and do while threads running. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, you're probably never going to say threads running equals false unless you're closing the application or something like that. But, uh, yeah, you can pretty much just ignore this. I find this is better than just doing while true because it's it just seems less buggy. Like, you have more control over it. And you can stop the thread or whatever, whenever. Anywho, um... Next, we're going to do our basic little thing, because running a thread out like this, it's doing absolutely nothing just like this, it's going to eat up the CPU, so we're going to do another thing. So we're going to do thread.sleep. And this is sort of where we find into more of the things that I sort of like about Java. You get... I mean, it's a little fucking anal, but... Um, 
you know, it's really good for newbie developers, and it really fucking makes your application solid when it forces you to handle exceptions like this. So, we got uh, un unhandled exception error. So what we're going to do is, uh, just let me get the interrupted exception, okay? So try, it tells you the name of whatever exception that's not being handled. So catch, uh, interrupted exception, ex, and then we go here and do log dot e for error, tag, put in our tag variable, and then um, thread, uh, sleep, error, whatever. And then when you put in the ex, and then when you get the ex, it sends in all or you uh, forward on this um, exception. It sends uh, all of the information to the debugger, so you can find the, the line that the error happens. So it's not as good as C sharp, where it just says where there's an error and it says "fuck, you have an error," blah blah blah. There it is. So you got the whole try catch thing in the. You basically you got to send the error to the debugger. Actually, it does send the errors. Oh, fuck. Just ignore what the fuck I just said there. I'm just gonna probably fucking confuse you. I've only actually fucking debugged, like, one thing so far, so don't trust what the fuck I'm saying. Anywho, um, yeah, we got my thread equals that. And then to actually start the thread, you just go my thread dot start. Ta-da. And then, of course, you can always do, uh, my thread dot stop. I don't know why it's crossed. So. Oh, it's depreciated. Depreciated. Okay, the, well, I don't know what to use for stopping if it's depreciated. I hate when they fucking do that. They use, they just depreciate something. Um, yeah, but fuck that shit. You have your threads running, like right? You have it in a loop, so who gives a fuck? You just say um, to stop it, threads running equals false, and it will let... Uh, this stuff here, finish up, and then it'll stop. You know, it's a lot better that way, rather than, you know, the stop thing would have caused a whole bunch of errors, and I don't know, that's probably why it's depreciated. They expect you to stop your loop or whatever in your worker. Anywho, um, yeah, that's threading for you, but what if you want to, say, call or change some text from your thread. And this is where, again, you got the same issue with uh, C Sharp, and um, basically you got your whole cross-thread communication thing. This is sort of where it gets a bit advanced for you newbies guys, but it's fairly simple in uh, this Android. So it's a little perk there, and it's just like fucking C Sharp with the whole uh, invoke thing, if you guys know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anywho, uh, what we do is we go activity dots, um, sorry, text view, view, equals um, text view there we are and then we go to activity and as you can see it's just like a fucking anonymous function if you're used to programming it in Java and sorry to all you newbies I keep making these references to other languages it's just what I do um, r dot id dot main here we go and we got view dot set text okay Da, da, da. Okay, and this is um, a little bit different than Java. Sorry, let me just fill this in there. A little bit in Java, so here it's it's nice and tells you that needs to be declared final. Woo! That's this is why I like this ID. It's a lot better than the ADTP thing. It's you know, it looks the same, but it's completely different. Anywho, uh, I'm just going to say. Um, main activity, f activity, f for final, sorry, let me do final f activity uh, equals activity. Oops, oh, there we go, final main activity, I had that reverse, sorry. Um, I'm told that I have a bit of autism. Let me just go f activity there, dot find view by ID. Um, that final, I'm pretty sure, I don't know what the fuck it means, but I'm pretty sure it just means that you're not going to change the value of it, or... I have no fucking idea what it is. Let, let me fucking just Google it. Um, Java final. Final. Final class. It's just a blah, blah, blah. 
according to Java, uh, for example, oh my god. 